Hello, everyone. My name is Brian Reed. I'm the CMO of Zero Fox. I'm excited to be with you today to talk to you about how to expand your social reach and protect your employees leveraging social media in your business. Quick introduction of myself. Uh, so as the CMO of Zero Fox, I've actually been using social media, specifically Twitter, uh, since actually the first year Twitter was available. And as a CMO in terms of driving my business, I find that social media is just as important as many of the other marketing outlets that I use to reach and communicate with my customers, my prospects, and my influencers. And over the years, we've built large social media practices as part of our overall digital and marketing strategies. I was lucky enough to join Zero Fox about a year ago, and uh, as a strategic partner with Hootsuite, Zero Fox provides social media and digital security that helps you protect your employees and your customers from the bad things that happen on social media. And so what I'd like to do today is share some of my experiences on the journey and talk about how you can best leverage social media in your organization while driving your business forward and achieving a real high ROI on that initiative. So we'll take a look at the, the upfront here at you know, the status quo and what's going on in terms of leveraging social and digital channels and what's going on across the landscape of business. We'll take a look at employee advocacy and take a look at it from both the brand perspective and the security perspective. You know, in our organization, for example, we're using social selling and many of our customers are using social selling, social support, social recruiting, and it becomes core part of their strategy. So we'll take a look at both the brand and security opportunities and challenges. We'll take a look at a couple of case studies uh, from some mutual customers. And then finally, we'll have a walkthrough on some best practices that you can take home with you and put to work immediately in your organization. So let's get started here. Let's take a look at, at what's really going on with the majority of the companies that we serve between the thousands of customers both Hootsuite and ZeroFox are working with. So when we look at, at what's going on in the industry, you know, the average organization, the average person in life now has over five social media accounts. It's pretty amazing how this has evolved. You might have two email addresses, your work email, your personal email. You might have one or two phone numbers. You have your mobile number. You might have a house number, although many organizations are, are getting rid of their home numbers. You may or may not have a work number. For many organizations like ours, our personal phone and our work phone are the same thing. But social media is one of, of interaction, and there's lots of different interaction channels, and so that's why we find this high distribution of Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat, and more. And what's interesting about social media, as social media has moved from being a personal communication tool really to a business platform that drives communication and ultimately business revenue and, and customer service. And so many of you may be in small organizations, you might be in large organizations, but there's many reasons to choose to leverage social media. And what's great about it is it is a set of channels that you can use to get above the noise and to better engage with the audience that you're trying to reach. And you have this phenomenal opportunity to engage with them outside of traditional networks and create a very personal relationship to create raving fans and to, in fact, leverage your employees to help you drive success in your business. So as a CMO, I'm a marketer, been a marketer for years, also been an engineer. I've written a lot of code, started a couple companies. And when I think about social media, there's a personal reason I like it, but there's a better business reason I like it. So I think we're familiar with many of these things. It's very easy to use social media. There's no big startup costs, cheaper, faster, than easier than setting up your website. It's a low cost to operate. Basically, the only cost of social media is your labor or your staff labor in terms of using it. You can basically reach anybody anywhere. Uh, and in fact, you can engage anybody anywhere. You know, here we're having this uh, conference today and you know, I'm in the United States, you're in Latin America, but we're using social to engage both through the digital controls here uh, in our ReadyTalk event, but also you know, interacting on Twitter uh, using the hashtag LATAM digital, right? So you can now pinpoint people and better segment people, better interact with people in a, in a truly innovative way. And when we look at that engagement, that engagement allows us to find new customers, but also helps us grow our customer base. Now, you know, if you think about customer service, for example, there can be one side of customer service uh, and marketing that's really driving new customer acquisition. Uh, but for a lot of brands, uh, social becomes the channel for customer service as well. 
Um, I'm a United One Billion Miler Flyer, uh, part of Global Services Program, but with United, I interact with them more over Twitter than I do talking to a human on the phone anymore. And that's what's happening for a lot of organizations is the users are selecting uh, a social network as a way to engage with a brand, whether it's a purchase, an evaluation, um, or customer service after a purchase. And so there's lots of ways you can leverage that across your organization. And that's really why social media is not just a marketing tool. It really has become a business platform for sales, marketing, HR, executives, media people, and more. So that's why we love it. Now, the, the challenge we have is the bad guys have also discovered that there's, there's a great way to leverage social media basically to do bad things. Um, so that ease of use of social media also means it's very easy for bad guys to create fake profiles. They create them in Minix. They can impersonate you, your employees, or your brands and launch attacks or scams and fraud on your customers. So what makes it easy for you is also easy for them. Bad guys love cheap and easy, right? But the global scale is, is kind of where it gets scary. So when we look at the demographics of bad guy behavior, there is a lot of bad guy behavior coming from certain parts of the world, uh, you know, such as Asia and, and Eastern Europe. But the bad guy can be down the street. The bad guy can be, any, can be anywhere in the world. And in many instances, the frauds and scams are highly organized coming out of cert certain countries, locations, or, or organizations. And they can be anywhere in the world. They can disappear and they can pop up again. One of the really interesting things about the bad guy tactics is, is it used to be uh, when you were looking at launching attacks, say, to uh, deliver malware, to deliver ransomware, steal credit card information, steal account information, you'd do spray and pray on email. And so you'd blast out email to some list of email addresses you have, and you hope it gets through the email. On social, it's a different ballgame. You can create you know, fake social accounts and just start interacting with people, and they'll start trusting you. They won't notice that it's not really the brand or really the employee they're talking to. It just kind of looks like them and kind of sounds like them. And the barriers, the, the um, human barriers to interaction are lowered substantially on social because we're used to this sort of one step of way social interaction. The bad guys have learned to engage better and they take advantage of that. And they turn those into attacks and that allows them to then basically create a larger victim database and, and extract bad things. Now, we're going to talk about what some of those things are. So what's, what's very interesting when we sort of put it all together is there are so many great things about social that will help you drive your business and make you more successful in terms of reaching customers, serving customers, building your brand, and reaching the market. Many of those same things that make social so cost-effective and so wide-reaching for you are also the things that make it scary that the bad guys can take advantage of as well. And so we want you to take advantage of using social, but we also want to make sure you're safe on the journey. So I want to show you just a few of the things that can happen out there uh, that we've seen from, from our research and from our customers in the market. And so there's, there's this category of external risks, and this is really where the bad guys are basically going after your brand and your customers. For most of what is going on, the bad guys are trying to steal money or they're trying to steal corporate credentials or personal credentials or login information, credit card numbers, anything that they can sell to someone else if they're not directly extracting money from you. So we see lots of fake coupons, online frauds and scams, uh, consumer packaged goods, retail outlets, uh, shopping malls, uh, fake drugs, fake products, a lot of those kinds of things we see out there. And, and one of the worst one these days is this ransomware mess where they basically lock down your machine and, and steal money from you uh, in, in order to, to make it available back to you. Um, one quick stat for you to just kind of understand how, how easy or bad this is. Um, I talked earlier about email phishing where, where you, you get a list of emails and you send emails out and you hope that they click on the link and then steal something. Well, what we've seen in the last two years is that the number of impersonators on social media has grown 11x. In other words, over the last two years, there's 10 times more fake accounts out there doing bad things, and that should be kind of a scary number. But what's also kind of scary about it is that social phishing, or using social to attack someone and steal their information or their money, is six times more effective than email. We've all learned to protect ourselves on email, now we have to learn to protect ourselves on social. 
And that's what today's about. Now we can, can look at some of the other risks, and these are more the, the internal brand risk. And this is, this is where things may be leaking out of your business over social. You know, we, we've all learned to socially share more, but sometimes people share too much, right? The, the regulatory compliance violation, for example, good board meeting, good numbers, happy brand. Well, if, if a CEO or a CFO tweets something like that, that could actually move the stock market and can be a financial violation according to your company financial regulations. Or you could have uh, employees uh, accidentally sharing information. Uh, we have healthcare customers, for example, where a, a nurse or a doctor, you know, takes a picture or a selfie of themselves in front of a patient board and accidentally releases patient information. Um, we actually had a scenario where a radiologist uh, released a, um, an X-ray uh, of the most amazing bone fracture she'd ever seen, but on the picture you could see the name of the patient. Now, those are big legal bad things uh, that can really get an, an organization in trouble. And then, you know, we just recently heard, you may have seen the WikiLeaks CIA leak here in the U.S., right? Stuff comes out or leaks out of an organization intentionally or unintentionally. So you want to make sure you're protected from the external attacks, but also make sure that your people aren't overly sharing and that you're controlling what they share and they're trained in what they share so everybody's safe and you get the best value out of it. So when you kind of, when we sort of bring it all together, you know, the, the opportunity is huge. Uh, Edelman is a, a top PR firm here in, in the U.S. and around the world. And, and really, you know, organizations now are recognizing that the real consumers want to hear from the employees as ambassadors of the company. Here at Zero Fox, we look at every employee as an ambassador of the company. Every employee is encouraged to share socially, to attend industry events. Uh, to speak proudly of the organization. And that helps drive business into us and create a strong uh, brand value and visibility in the world. When there's tr some tremendous force multipliers you get out uh, by enabling your employees to share freely on social because of the reach of their networks. Uh, and there's also a, a great interaction with the consumer or the customer um, because the customer is pleased that they have a one-on-one -on -one interaction to a human and they're not just you know, talking to a computer website. So when you, when you think about, you know, leveraging your employees as part of your overall strategy of reaching out, there's some really cool things that, that you can gain from it. You know, your employees are on social whether they do it at work or not. You know, think about yourself. You're probably on two or three social networks, maybe as many as five as, as the stat before. And then think about that as a, as a multiplying effect across your entire base of employees. And when you think about the employee communication in their social network, you know, they know what people in their social network are talking about. They know what they're interested about. Uh, many people respond to questions, right? So I'll often ask them, I need to buy a new car. I tweeted about it. I posted to Facebook, you know, what do people think of certain cars? And I got a lot of feedback. I'm easily able to crowdsource feedback. Well, you want raving fans out there who are recommending your products or engaging with your products or sharing them with their friends. Start with your own employees as a great way to share that information. And what's also kind of neat about it is that once you get your employees engaged, they like doing it too. And so the employees very quickly will take this up and start learning that sharing things at work with their friends and with their extended networks helps benefit them themselves, helps benefit their friends, and also helps benefit the business. And so let's take advantage of not just sharing from a centralized marketing world where marketing is the social communicator or tech support and customer service is the social communicator or HR is the social communicator. Why not get every employee, no matter what their job is in the business, socially sharing? And there's a huge opportunity to do that. So when we look at some, some great you know, benchmarks from social media today, from Cisco, you know, from, from other sources, there's some phenomenal statistics coming through about what happens. So a much higher level engagement, 8x, anybody would kill for an 8x metric, but an 8x level of engagement leveraging these employee networks, right? A dramatic increase in reshares when an employee shares to their network, and then that network shares it on top, and you can start thinking about the mul multiplying effect. You know, today you might have 500 Twitter followers and think that's a lot, or 1,000 Twitter followers and think that's a lot, or 100,000 Twitter followers and think that's a lot, or a million Twitter followers Great for you if you have a million Twitter followers or Instagram followers. But imagine if you have 
a hundred or a thousand employees and they each have that same multiple, that's how you get the multiple of the result. And that's really what we're trying to do is amplify that communication coming out of your business and across your network. There's something interesting that also happens, not just on the outward perspective when you're communicating to a much broader audience, but also internally within an organization. You know, when I look at our own business, we have a young, fast-growing business, um, and it's very engaged. So the business itself is socially engaged. People are, you know, we have multiple streams, and we have our own private employee Facebook page where we share internally, and that happens. And, and if I look at my prior companies, and then we go out and we look at external case studies out there, socially engaged companies are substantially more successful. Um, so whether you look at, at you know, LinkedIn and some altimeter research, whether you look at what IBM's done in studying their own employees, they certainly have hundreds of thousands of them, that socially engaged employees using these social networks are like socially engaged humans outside of work. They're more likely to stay and engage. They have a better time at work. They're more satisfied with their job, and they have a better outlook or a better view on life. When they're engaged every day in sharing personal things socially or sharing business things across their personal social connections, right, they're happier employees, and that's really what we want. So, you know, as a marketer, you might think of also partnering with HR and, and some of your executive management to think about how social engagement can improve employee morale and employee retention, which is a big important thing in every company. It can help with cross-training, and it can help drive revenue and uh, reach in your business publicly. So, okay, so the opportunity really is tremendous when we look at it, right? So, so lots of interesting capabilities and high value to marketing, a few scary things out there as well. Let's look at what really is the power of social in terms of, of driving your business and your market opportunity. And that's really that, that if we look at how the world wants to engage with you and your business and how consumers, B2B, B2C, B2T, uh, B2Gov, they want to hear directly from employees. They want to hear from the human behind the business, not the brick and mortar of the business or not the digital website of the business. So there's this really exciting opportunity to step forward and take advantage of leveraging your employees as ambassadors for the company. And as Edelman says here, the public is asking for it. You now have the opportunity to leverage tools and techniques and best practices like we're going to talk about today to take advantage of that. And so I'd like to share a little bit of insight for you about why this opportunity is so great. So when we look at your employees and how your employees can help you drive the business, think about what they're doing on a daily basis. Your employees are already tapped into the latest news about your internal business. They're also tapped into the pulse of what's going on in their social networks. They know what their friends are sharing. They know what their community is sharing. They know what's interesting to those people. They're probably responding to questions people ask with recommendations or advice. Um, they're asking questions themselves for uh, recommendations and advice. They're sharing clips of their family and what have you. Well, what's really interesting is that those same employees know so much about your business. Why not enable them to share out to those larger communities and share with those larger communities key information about your business that can help your business, right? So you have an employee base. Your employee base, your entire employee population is going to be much larger than just your marketing team or your single person doing social media. You know, I think we said a 24x multiple. So let's drive forward and take advantage of that. Let's give them the tools and really make it easy for them to engage and participate. And that's really a phenomenal opportunity you have for your business. There's been a lot of research done on leveraging employee networks to communicate with customers in the marketplace. Uh, from Social Media Today, from Cisco, uh, and other MSL research groups, and, and there's some pretty tremendous stats coming through. You know, as, as a CMO, when I look up, up where do I get ROI or how do I maximize investment, I'm looking for these kinds of returns. And so, you know, an 8x engagement level where we can recognize that, you know, when the employee shares the content, the person on the other side is much more likely to look at it and engage from it and engage with it and read it, consume it, whatever that might be, than if you share it from the company brand. And the expansion effect or the implication, amplification effect where, you know, an employee shares it and then through their network gets reshared and reshared and reshared, that's where you get this very powerful affinity network, and we're going to look at a mathematical model to see what that looks like. So it's really exciting that your employees can drive new brand engagement and your employees can actually drive 
your outreach to a broader market, which in turn should improve revenue and customer service. So that's a way to look at the external impact. Now let's take a look at the internal impact into the business. And when we look at your employees as participants in the business, there's some really great research out there from the likes of LinkedIn, IBM, and others that really look at, you know, socially engaged employees. What does that mean to the employees, the work life, the quality of work, um, the retention rate, and things like that? And so the retention rate and optimism grows, you know, substantially when employees are socially engaged. Much in the same way if you measure are they socially engaged at work by hanging around in the coffee room or doing activities together uh, or meeting each other before or after work, this is another way to look at it. Over social, when they're socially engaged, they're more likely to stay, they're more satisfied in their day, and they're more optimistic about the future. So you can actually partner with HR, you can partner with your CFO, you can partner with business leaders to talk about how social engagement will actually improve employee morale, retention, and growth of the business internally while also, of course, benefiting the business externally. So let's take a look at, at you know, employee ad advocacy and, and some great ways to, to take advantage of it. And so as we, we dig into the math here, it's pretty, pretty substantial. So you know, look at the average organization, uh, hundreds of Facebook fans, maybe you're at 1,500 Twitter followers, 5,000 LinkedIn followers. So your reach is a simple multiple of who are all those people. So you know, from that world, if you are, Facebook posting, tweeting, LinkedIn posting, you're reading, reaching 7,000 people. However, if you then add in hundreds of employees, each of whom have hundreds of Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, now you're getting a massive multiplier that can be up to 24x the original number, right? So it just simply makes sense from a mathematical perspective that if more employees are, are sharing and advocating on behalf of your customers and your business, you're going to reach more people, which should drive more business and higher customer set. What's also interesting is when that sharing is coming from a human, not from a corporate account, there's a much higher trust level and a higher level of engagement that occurs when it's a human that shares, not a technical brand or a digital website that shares. So you get this double bang reach in terms of driving that advocacy. So, you know, some sample data here, right? So some 7 million followers of of Hootsuite, they do a single post, you get 254 sessions and 64 click-throughs, quick sample math. Add in 300 advocates, now the sessions spike and the click-throughs spike, right? So, so you know, Hootsuite's internal testing looks like this. Uh, at ZeroFox, we're using the same thing with advocacy. We have similarly three to four X multiples coming out of uh, the employee sharing versus the corporate account sharing. And so, you know, it's a phenomenal way to drive the business. So when we think about really the four points of what you're able to do with an employee advocacy strategy, we can sum them up here. So you can improve internal communication between employees as well as between employees and outside your business into the marketplace where your customers, your partners, and others exist. You get to amplify and communicate more content out faster, and that content now becomes better engaged, as we said before, when it's shared from another person, people are more likely to engage with the content than shared by the corporation itself. Huge for social selling, right? We're having substantial success with social selling at Zero Fox. My last two companies was the same way. Um, you know, in the past, it was kind of hard to social sell. Now there's tools and best practices. It's really a great way to go. And of course, social channels are a great way to share thought leadership, right? Well, you might be going to the media or producing white papers or interesting videos having social channels to distribute them is how you spread your thought leadership uh, on a much wider scale and getting more people to engage with that. And that'll actually improve your position and rank as a thought leader. So what I'd like to do is head into the next section and take a look at the security perspective, right? We've seen some, some ROI on the, on the business perspective of employee engagement. Let's take a look at what happens on the security side. And so as we dig in into the security side, right, really security is two sides of the same coin. You want strong advocacy and communication into the market, but you want to make sure you're doing it safely for yourself, for your customers, for your employees, and for your business, right? So how do we bring this all together? Well, this entire presentation is about this two sides of the same coin. Advocacy is head, protection is tails. Let's make sure we do them together. 
If we do this effectively, we'll make a lot more money, everybody will be safe, our customers will be super happy, and we'll grow a phenomenal business. If we don't do it right, we could lose money, we could go out of business, or what have you. So let's make sure we take advantage of that and get the highest gains possible. So as we look at, at you know, what does security mean, what does protection mean in the land of social, it basically means do the advocacy right. So make sure that you have the appropriate policies in place to make sure that your employees do the right things and the safe things, but also that you're working to help protect your customers. So make sure you have the right policy in place. Make sure you train your people, right? So proper training will help you make sure that they're doing the right things and then make sure you're protected. And protection can come from training, but you also should have some monitoring or protection in place. You know, today I don't think anyone would run a laptop without antivirus on it. And the same can, can, can happen in social. You can have protection on your social networks to make sure the bad guys aren't doing bad things to you and your customers. So I'd like to, to look at a pair of case studies to take a look at this sort of in the real world and, and see what, what can happen in the real world and then how you can protect yourself in the real world. So uh, example, one of our customers, we do a lot of business with law firms. Uh, law firms like to use social selling. It's a great way for lawyers to engage with prospective clients, to engage with their clients and be seen as active in the market. Um, and many times lawyers will be an advocate for a certain clause like uh, child welfare or educational initiatives or environmental initiatives, right? So they wanna be seen as being vocal in that particular world that they're working in. But the challenge becomes if there's no standards and control, uh, if there's no proper training, then the lawyers kind of run wild in an unregulated world, and that can get you in a lot of trouble. Um, there have been law firms who have been sued or put out of business because the, the lawyers themselves were improperly sharing information. They might understand the notion of confidentiality or how, or how to speak properly in a courtroom, but the social networks, oh, it's social, so I can be more social. It's like me hanging out with my buddies, drinking beer and playing golf, and suddenly they're sharing things that they shouldn't. And so the brand gets damaged and potentially lose their business. Worst of all would be they would actually share some confidential information uh, about a client and, and ruin their business. And so the great strategy we have is a law firm can easily enable social selling by deploying the right tools, right? So by deploying Hootsuite's Amplify tool, which is a great social selling tool that we use and, and thousands of organizations around the world use, it's easy to, to deploy and train. And what winds up happening is now the lawyers can share easily and they're sharing pre-approved content. So it's click, click and easy to pre-approve. So the content's provided into them, they share it. They may also have original content they want to post. They can suggest it. It gets approved by someone internally and gets shared back out. So whether you have 10 lawyers, 50 lawyers, 100 lawyers, or 1,000 lawyers, suddenly you get a giant amplification by enabling those lawyers to safely, easily, and with just a click of a button, share information which they're communicating out to their clients and their social networks, which should help improve their brand and drive their business. In, uh, in one particular customer, we saw social selling increasing the law firm revenue, uh, increasing the law firm revenue uh, in just a quick six months uh, by 25%. So that revenue comes from that sharing, which in turn drove more clients into the business. And that's the kind of economic ROI that the social selling can realistically drive. Now let's take a, another look at, at another organization, regulated space. We do a lot of business in financial services. And financial services, no matter what country you're in in the world, has lots of rules about how they can operate, what they can communicate, and what they cannot. And you know, we've seen this happen in a couple of organizations is, is while they're very careful on things like email, or they're very careful uh, with certain other parts of their business and how they communicate, they're not so careful in social. Right, so their, their guard is down. They do a lot of work on social. They happen to open social applications on a company-driven laptop. And the bad guys know that the banks are where the money is. So the bad guys are targeting bankers. They're targeting banking employees. Uh, they're targeting you know, high net worth individuals, financial advisors. And you know, what they're trying to do is find a scam to get their way in behind the firewall and steal money information or corporate customer information out of the banks. Right, so these employees that you want to have sharing now become targets of the bad guys to penetrate the financial institution. And that's an outward in attack. Uh, but then there's also those employees improperly sharing information externally, right? An employee shouldn't be sharing information about trades or trading information or about who their clients are. An employee can't be sharing uh, competitive information. It's how you make sure that the bad sharing 
uh, outbound sharing that could damage the business doesn't happen as well. And so the goal is, is to prevent, prevent and block that as part of the organization. And so what we want to be able to do is protect someone in that kind of realm in order to make them successful in growing their business, not losing their business. And we can do that in this way. So, you know, by leveraging the Amplify, the Hootsuite Amplify product, you put in controls about how they share the information. And then you bring in the Zero Fox employee protection, and that makes sure that bad things don't happen while they're sharing that information. So it protects those employees, those bankers, those executives from inbound attacks that are malicious links or scams that are actually trying to steal client information or money straight out of the bank. And so any of these advisors or people with privileged access, they now have this layer of protection to make sure that all the communication and all the social communication they're having is safe and clean. And there's, there's no issues that are going to penetrate the network and they're in compliance with whatever regulatory rules and legal things are in place. And so you get this great win-win because now in a financial services institution, marketing and the business can stretch and leverage all those employees for advocacy. Where they can make sure they meet their compliance needs and also keep their brand intact and actually grow their brand. So it's a, it's a pretty exciting path forward here when you combine uh, Zero Fox and Hootsuite really is a strategy to drive employee advocacy safely in your organization. So I'd like to share a, a few best practices with you that we've learned over the past couple of years uh, that really kind of walk through the, the best way to, to leverage uh, social and protection to be highly successful. So a few recommendations here on how to take advantage of, of employee advocacy and amplification while protecting your business. So the first thing is with social, make sure you understand both the liabilities and the opportunities. It's easy to set up, as we said before, it's easy to use, it's cost effective, and that's the opportunity side. Just make sure you're set up to do it safely and in the correct way with the right policies, training, and, and really protection in place. Recognize the fact that if you're not on social, if you're not leveraging your employee advocates, you're really missing an opportunity. You know, when you look at a 24X average reach or 24 times reach, uh, through your employee base and their networks and those extended networks, that's something you really want to take advantage of. So don't miss out on that opportunity. It's not hard to tap into. It just takes an, organi an organized approach uh, and a couple of the right best practices to get there. Like any initiative, make sure you have the right goals set. Make sure you measure as you grow. Plan how you get there. Um, I built social programs and strategies at a half a dozen companies now over the past 15 years or so. The social has been out there. It's like anything else. Build the plan, execute the plan, you'll get there. Um, think about your path through it. Make sure you plan out your goals on the positive side of how you want to gain. Make sure you plan out your goals about employee engagement versus marketing, leveraging social, so how is employee advocacy going to fit, how are you going to protect yourself, and how do you see that growing over time. Make sure you set up everything, right? It's not just, hey, everybody, let's start tweeting or Facebook posting about the business, or here's an Instagram picture everyone should scare, share or like. Do the right thing, right? Build out the right policy, train your people, enable your people, make them successful, and that's how you get the force multiplier. It really is not a huge amount of work to get a tremendous gain in your business, and that's why so many organizations look to leverage social as part of their strategy. It's substantially cheaper and less complex than so many other things you can do from a marketing outreach perspective, and you not only get the, the amplification benefit, you also get that improved HR, uh, employee retention, and happier employees out of it. And then finally, of course, make sure you use the right tools and tactics. Um, there are phenomenal advocacy tools out there. Uh, Hootsuite and Amplify are, are excellent products um, that can make you successful and make it super easy to share that information out into the field. I wish I'd had Amplify in my prior companies. It would have been a lot easier than begging, borrowing, and, and otherwise stealing to try to get my employees to, to take advantage of the social networks. And then make sure you protect your employees through that. And Zero Fox Employee Protection can help you do that. Post socially, be safe on social, and that'll really help you drive your business. When we look at how Amp the Hootsuite Amplify solution actually works, I'd like to, to give you a view into uh, the technology a bit. So, Basically, your uh, marketing or other assigned team will send content uh, into the Amplify environment. The Amplify application runs on your end user devices. It's a great mobile app. Your employees simply open the application and they click to share. It's literally click to open the app, click to share, and you're done, right? So it's very simple for employees to do. They can do it on a regular basis. They can receive notifications reminding them to share. 
those impressions will grow dramatically. Every time we add another, another wave of employees, you get another force multiplier wave of increased impressions. And that leads to increased clicks, which leads to increased ROI of, of, uh, of your social investment. Very straightforward, deploy the application, get your employees productive with that application. And it's a really great user experience. Uh, runs on all the major operating systems as you can see here. Uh, like we said, you can see a series of posts here on the picture on the left, um, on the picture in the middle then. Um, you know, this is something you wanna share. You can also look at who else has shared it, liked it, what have you. Um, and then you get your choice of channels to share it on. Uh, you from the administrator side can configure what networks you wanna share on and then the end user can choose to enroll one or more of their personal or business networks and share that out as well across multiple different channels, which is also a great multiplier. You know, it might take them five, 10, 15 minutes to post a piece of content on three different networks with a single click they can post on every network they're connected to. So it really is a huge time saver. And when you think about ROI for the employee, if it's one click easy, they're more likely to engage than lots of copy and paste, which has been the traditional way to solve this problem in the past. So when we look at, at, at ZeroFox and the, and the ZeroFox employee protection, it's a, it's a straightforward environment here. So the you know, first thing you do is you load your employee list into the environment so that you can uh, launch your employees. Uh, the users then go through a self-enrollment process where they load in their social media accounts uh, that they want to have protected. Uh, there's some great training videos on best practices. They'll show them how to safely share, safely post, uh, how to manage their access, things like two-factor authentication, uh, how to make sure they're not, not overly sharing and they make sure they respect their own privacy and protect themselves. Uh, when a new social event occurs, whether it's sort of a global social attack like um, uh, X number of accounts have been, have been uh, leaked or lost or exposed uh, on the internet, you should go change your password. Uh, to a specific attack like a malicious link or malware or an impersonator is attacking you as an individual employee, that employee will get alerted on those risks so they can, can ignore it, delete it, uh, what have you. And then from a central perspective, you know, you as an administrator, your organization as administrator, uh, can track what's going on in the base. You can see if there's any organized attacks against the company um, and track that your employees are being effective in using the platform. So it's a great, very straightforward, um, activate it, it runs, it trains, and then it monitors for bad things happening to make sure that you and your business don't get in trouble. And so uh, it's responsive design, so it runs web, web-based product in the cloud, so it runs on the device or in the cloud. As you can see here, there's a training video in the middle. Uh, there's a risk measurement on the right. At the top, I can see, you know, I'm, I've got three active protected accounts. I've got three alerts to look at. I've got some training to complete, um, you know, uh, achievements or medallions for, for each thing that you do. Point and click, very straightforward experience um, for your organization. So as we wrap things up here, I want to thank you for your time today. Uh, I appreciate the time to share with you uh, really some best practices around how to drive very high ROI from your marketing investment. And really what, what I've tried to help teach my organization understand, and hopefully you can help your organization understand, is that social is about every employee engaging with everyone in the marketplace. So the, more you can, the sooner you can get started on an employee advocacy program, where you not only engage socially from your corporate accounts, but you have all your employees engaged, the sooner you'll be driving better customer sas satisfaction, more engagement, uh, higher revenue. And make sure you do it the right way and the safe way. We shared some best practices you can put to use. We encourage you to do that. Um, you can reach out to us for more information and guidance on that. Uh, between the Hootsuite Amplify solution and the ZeroFox End User Employee Protection solution, we have great technology that can make you hugely successful as you drive this into your organization. So I'd like to thank you for your time and look forward to moving on to the question and answer period.